Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. In today's card, I'm doing some more watercoloring. I have my mixed drinks set by Stampin' Up. I'm just using this wine glass here. I'm also using a set of artist brushes by Ranger. Um, there's several brushes in, brushes in the set. I'm just using these two that I have here. One kind of a medium and then a smaller one to get into the smaller areas. And then I'm using my Peerless watercolors. My daughter created this cover for me. And then I have them all cut into samples so that I could see the colors that I have. I'm using the Distress Watercolor card stock simply because um, it is a bright white color. Mine comes in A2 size and there's a smooth side and a textured side. And uh, whenever I'm gonna be stamping, I use the smooth side just because it's easier to get a good image. So I'm going to stamp my wine glass in some VersaFine Black Onyx ink. Uh, it's a pigment ink so that it stays wet and it gives me time to emboss. So I'm gonna, I've already stamped and cut uh, the same image out of a post-it paper. And so now I'm going to stamp my wine glass again a little bit up and to the right. So it looks like this glass is behind the first glass. And then I'll sprinkle it with some clear embossing powder and heat it to set it. And that will raise up my image so that it'll help my watercolor stay in the lines. There's a stamp in the set to actually stamp the wine if you wanna do that. But I'm gonna watercolor mine uh, with this number two brush. And I'm using rose red. Um, I did not wet my cardstock beforehand. And I kind of wish that I did. I'm gonna do it on the next one. Uh, but the reason is because this paper is very thick and absorbent and so it doesn't give you, it, it or absorbs the color very quickly and starts to dry very fast. Um, so it creates some, it could create some lines like watercolor lines if you don't move fast enough. So I went ahead and did that really quickly the first round and now I'm dropping and you can see how vibrant the color is on the second go around. So you, you can always add uh, more layers to intensify the color. For the next glass, I'm gonna do, use the same color. I'm smoothing out this first one a little bit. I thought my curve was a little too steep. So for the second one, I'm gonna put the water down first and then I'm gonna dry, and I just did it on the edge actually, and then I dropped it in and found that I really didn't like the way it turned out. I would much rather brush the top edge of the water, of the, of the wine, uh, because then it gets a more crisp, defined edge. So, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna color the whole thing and then I'll grab some more color. You can see I barely touched that cardstock that has the uh, color in it and I got so much more color on my brush. So it's actually a good idea to put one color down, to put the color down lightly so you can control how much color goes on. You can always put on multiple layers. Now, this has had a chance to dry this first glass while I was doing the second one. That's how quickly it dries. So what I did was I put a little bit of water on my brush. So I rinsed it, so now I just have water, and I'm gonna create kind of a curved line here, and it's gonna be a light reflection. So right now it's very subtle, you can't see it very much, but I'm gonna take a tissue, and when I uh, put the tissue to the cardstock, it pulls up the color, so it really makes it a pretty bright reflection. I really like the way this turned out. And uh, now this other one is pretty dry. It doesn't have to be completely dry, just a little bit uh, damp is fine. And I'm gonna, again, just take water, draw that curve in line with the glass edge, and then touch it with a tissue to pull it up. I want my wine to appear dimensional, so um, I'm using quite a bit of water. You can see on the craft mat, I'm sort of mixing it up to dilute my rose red, because I want it to be a much lighter uh, version of the color. So now I'm going to kind of curve in the opposite direction to create a surface for the wine that's in my glass. And you wanna make sure that you dry that first uh, wine uh, that I've already filled the glass with first before you move in and do this because if it touches the water, the first part will react and I want it to be a really defined edge. All right, I'm gonna work on my glass while that dries and you can see I'm really working some water. Um, I just got more water on my craft mat to dilute this pearl gray because I just want it to be very, very subtle. And I'll start at the bottom because that's not really gonna be that visible and that's where the darkest will be where the shadow is. And once I know that I've got a pretty good amount of color on my brush, I can move to the other areas. I'm just gonna gently you know, draw a couple of lines up the stem of the glass. And then for the top of the glass, I'm just going to randomly place some horizontal lines. And there's really not a rhyme or reason, 
but I am definitely leaving a lot of it white. So I'm not coloring the whole thing solid and you can see that there are lines and this makes it look, look like a true watercolor. Uh, I do want to ground these glasses on a table so I'm just dropping some water at this point at the bottom of these glasses and then I'm going to pick up some of this diluted pearl gray and I'm starting with the diluted because I don't want it to be too dark um, so I can always start light and add more color. So you can see I actually even picked some up from the cardstock, the, the peerless cardstock and dropped it in there. So I have some kind of to the left in the middle and to the right. Now if you notice, if you go look at a glass of wine, it's kind of dark on the edge um, where the, the edge of the wine is against the glass. So I'm taking a rich raspberry marker. Um, you can also use picked raspberry, mine was out of ink. And I'm drawing a line, but I'm not making it solid. So it's kind of solid in the edges, but then I sort of dot it as it gets toward the middle of the glass. I trimmed my panel down to four by five and a quarter, and now I'm marking five eighths of an inch on all sides. And this is gonna be the boundary for the watercolor. Now I set five eighths because it would kind of get down into the glasses and cover them up, uh, but only about halfway down the stem. So here are the three colors that I'm gonna be using. The rose red is the same color as the wine, so I'm gonna put that in the upper left-hand corner and then move toward the cobalt blue. So you can see I'm taking the bigger brush, the one slash two, I don't know if that's half or one slash two, I'm not sure, but I covered the whole area with water first before I put my uh, peerless colors down because I want it to, to blend. And remember I talked about how this cardstock is really thick and absorbent. And so unless I have that water already on my cardstock, it's gonna dry super quick. And then I'm gonna get some watercolor staining and lines and not as much blending as I would like. So, uh, so I'm starting with the rose red in the upper left hand corner. I'm pulling it down with my brush. I'm using quite a bit of water. I'm going grabbing more water. And uh, once I've got my corner done, I'm gonna drop in my mauve. You can see I have a lot of water on my brush and it's getting into the rose red and pushing it back toward the corner. Uh, so uh, I'm going to kind of fix that in a little bit. But for now, I'm, I'm happy with the fact that these colors are going on really diluted because it gives me a chance to get them all blended and get them down on the cardstock uh, and then make sure that I don't get any kind of water staining because I want it to be a pretty smooth application. So now I've got uh, my rose red again and I'm putting it back up in there in the corner, filling in the area where the water had kind of pushed it back. And you can see I'm tapping. So I'm doing a lot of tapping when I'm getting between the two colors so the line where the two colors overlap I like to do tapping and not brushing first because it might pull up the paper by doing too much brushing. And second, because um, it helps the, the colors blend without looking like they've been brushed together. All right, so now I'm moving on to my cobalt blue and you can see again, I put more water down to make sure that I'm not getting any kind of separate lines as I'm brushing this on. Now I think that the watercolor is a lot easier to do on different paper. So that's why this isn't really my favorite paper, but I use it because it's a bright white color, just like the Canson XL mixed media watercolor, or it's not watercolor paper, it's just mixed media paper. Um, a lot of people like that paper, but it's very thin. And so when you're applying this much water, when you're doing a background, it can warp it pretty badly, uh, which is why I decided to go with this cardstock for the card. So the nice thing about this brush here is you can see how flat the tip is and so I can get really up close to that wine glass without going over the lines. Now you could actually mask the glasses uh, and like with a liquid mask and then rub it off when you're done uh, but it would seem like a lot of trouble and I didn't think it would be too bad to actually work around the glasses. Now I had a little bit too much of a faded area between the purple and the blue so you can see I'm tapping in a little bit more purple. And then I decided, you know, I think I'm just going to leave it at this point because it's better not to do too much, sort of less is more. And now I'm taking that small brush that I used to color the glasses and I'm going to fill in the area down here because it's just so small. So I'm not worrying about um, how, how it's blending and all that. It's all just one color. So I'm just filling it in with a small brush just because it's easier to stay in the lines. 
My paper had warped quite a bit, so I decided to cover it while it was still damp with an acrylic block. And when I removed the block, it was still a tiny bit damp, but look at how flat it is. So it is possible to straighten it out, but as it dried further and completely dried, it became a lot more warped, and you'll see this in a second. So I'm gonna put my sentiment uh, kind of in the middle, just above the wine glasses, with some Hero Arts black ink in my Misty. In a second attempt to kind of flatten out my paper, I'm gonna put my creative corners on here so it kind of leaves more room for the cardstock to dry, it's more exposed. And I'm just gonna leave this in place while it dries completely. And so now I've left it for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. So I'm gonna take off all my magnets here and lift it up to show you what it looks like. And um, it's pretty, it's dry at this point, but you can see it's back to being warped. Um, and I tried applying it with my uh, hands and it was, it's not as easy as when you're heating embossing. When you apply water to it, it's a lot harder to unwarp it. So I just put a heavy load of ATG tape runner on the back and adhered it to my card base, which is Nina Solar White. Um, and it is a little bit warped, but I guess that's just the way it goes. I tried to iron it actually, and that didn't work either. <laughs> anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.